Good morning, viewers at home. Yeah, welcome to another beautiful edition of the show, Perspectives. As usual, you know that I am your host, Yinka Kenny. It's my name. Wow, today, well, we're going to be looking at... Um, something that is being talked about you know because here on perspectives if it happened it's happening or it's being talked about we bring you the full gist here on the show few weeks ago it was all over the country about talks about the governance with their 100 days in office well we are looking at something similar this morning uh it's also from the it's also from the uh, uh executive um uh, governor's um uh, will, it say, will I say office or how would how will we how will we call it? Well, still in the governor's in the government house. It's still in the government house, uh, but in a different capacity. This time around, we are looking at what our first ladies, what they have been doing. Yes, a lot of first ladies they've been going about doing this, doing the, doing a lot of things. But um, with our research, we realize that there is one first lady that has been so prominent in our humanitarian services and she's been all over the social media everybody is talking about her ah this uh, first lady she does not have a mandate but then by virtue of you know her spouse uh, position she feels morally obliged to contribute positively to the state's uh, 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 development for so many good reasons she's been in the news and she continues to get commendation from people of our state and beyond. Through her initiative, she has an initiative that she calls Ilaria Lua Development. Oh, I've let the cat out of the bag. She has taught the lives of so many people, particularly in the areas of health and empowerment. You know, one of her speeches, one of her speeches I listened to, she said that um, she derived joy in, you know, putting smiles on people's face which of the first ladies are we talking about we are talking about the first lady all the way from the state of Oshun, mrs oyet which is kafayat oyetola let's take you through a jolly ride on some of our activities in the state stay tuned and watch this the purpose of what we are doing now is uh, free surgery that is being sponsored by the first lady, uh, Mrs. Kafayat, she's the one responsible for the buying of all the materials that we are using. So far now, we have done about 90 cases. Uh, we still have some other cases remaining, and uh, surely within the next one hour, we are going to finish all the cases. Uh, the first lady, Mrs. Kafaya Toyitola, believes this is one way of probably giving to the society what God has endowed her with. So basically, that is what is going on. Today's program is in line with the Social Protection Mission of the Development Initiative. We are all familiar with the saying that there are no Meaning, how uh, is what? We have the convention that we are in the provision of health. No one, I mean, none of the people of our great state should be left unserved. We are determined to follow this so that we, especially for the benefit of our women and children. I want everybody to help me give kudos to Almighty God and back to her. She, God, the Lord has already used it for me. We met, it's not up to a month, and she paid all the money. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not up to a month. That would be the first thing. She's a caring mother. She's loved. The day that she called me that has come and meet her at Iraguji, I said, ah, I'm coming right now. I took uh, motive is to empower women. I don't want women to depend solely on their husband. beneficiaries of Ileri Oluwa development 
uh, initiatives. Mrs. Uh, Kafayat Oyetola. She empowered us to start uh, our business. Yeah, welcome back. The show is still Perspectives and Yinka Kenny is my name. I tell you this first lady is one out of many first ladies. I hope she continues this way, Mrs. Uh, the first lady of the state of Oshun, Mrs. Kafayat Uyetola. I hope she continues in this strength that she has started with. And we hope that every other first ladies we emulate, you know, from our actions and them um, they keep doing, you know, touching the lives of uh, people. It's all about humanitarian service. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Please stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. The show is still Perspectives. Yes, in the studio I have with me. You know, at times, in our people just decide to disappear and reappear. He has reappeared anyway. I have with me in the studio this morning, Abib Abdul. Good morning, Abib Abdul. Yes, I've, I've, I reappeared when I hear we are talking about money. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm in for the money. <laughs> yeah, in for the money. <laughs> good morning, good morning, viewers. It feels, too, feels good to be here once again. I'm sure you, you're having a good time. We rest assured that the jolly good ride will continue. Yes, talking about the jolly good ride. We know that earlier in the week, Nigerians woke up with the news that they were to pay more in terms of charges for cash-based transactions. This led to all kinds of interpretation and misinformation. Uh, the House of Reps has also mandated that the implementation of the new charges the implementation of the new charges be put on hold. CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, has maintained that the charges are in, the, in line with the cashless policy to further discourage money laundering, but encourage accountability and easy tracking of movements of money. Now, where did we actually get this wrong? Or is it a case of much ado about nothing? We will be discussing this and many more of of these uh, with a financial expert. He is a seasoned professional in the financial sector with years of ex experience in the banking industry. In the studio with me this morning, I have a chartered accountant and a director in the board of Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN. Uh, is a board member in Solvency and Corporate Re-Engineering Faculty of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. I have in the studio this morning, Mr. Akimbumi Akinshola Akinde. Did I get that? Yes, good morning. <laughs> uh, we are still, it's, it's my pleasure to be here to discuss this issue with us. Yes, welcome. Thank you for being here with us in the studio. There has been so many much ado about these uh, two percent and three percent. You know, in Nigeria, you know, the charges recently announced by CBN, especially deposits. You know, a lot of people have. You know, is it is it just a, a panic? Are we is it are we justified with uh, all the noise we are making about this um, two percent? What's your opinion about this? Okay, um, like I said, thank you again for having me. Um, in my view, uh, we need to put some things in perspective, and I would think that uh, the 
the, so much noise about it may not exactly be justified and i'll take some um, some points about it first of all the, this this is not new as you, you know you may have in some quarters you know some people think this is new or it's about this uh, current administration i need to say that the the processes leading to this is about a decade old i mean it started long ago and you know stakeholders and uh, industry and expert were, were you know were carried along so this is not new i mean and you know it started in lagos in 2012 and then extended to um, lagos Obu, anambra abia kano and rivers and nct in october 2013 and nationwide in 2014 that's the withdrawal part of it and then um so it's not new first of all uh, the second thing is that uh, contrary to what some people have been saying, it's only on cash-based transactions. It's not on all the all the all the transactions. It's only on cash-based, only on cash-based transactions. Thirdly, is that it's not on the entire uh, deposit you make. It's in excess of five hundred thousand for individuals, and ex in excess of uh, three million for for corporate. In, in okay, let me just cut you short a bit because here on perspectives we try to break down our grammar. You try not to speak too too much drama. We will try to you know bring it down to the layman so that the layman can understand what we're talking about. Before I continue, I want to say that we're sorry this morning because of our time we cannot pick your calls. But please do well to send us text messages. The number is on your screen: zero eight one zero eight five one six six four four. Send us your text messages and we will read out your message. Messages. Now, breaking it down, you are saying that if I want to go and withdraw 500,000, mm. oh, let me say I'm withdrawing 505,000 Naira. Mm. I'm not going to be built on my 500,000. Yes. I'll be built on my 5,000 Naira. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, so in essence, if you are up to 500,000 as mm -hmm. an individual, mm -hmm. you can deposit and withdraw. And up to 3 million Naira mm -hmm. as a corporate, corporate entity, mm -hmm. you can deposit and withdraw. Now, as an individual, if you are depositing 600,000, the charge is on the 100,000 extra, extra, which is the 2,000, which is the 2% for deposit. What if I'm, what if I'm depositing 505,000 Naira? Is there no charges on there that? There is a charge of five. There is a charge on the five thousand. On the five thousand yes, naira. Yes, yes. yes, okay. The, the charge will be so any the, any uh, cover so above five hundred thousand will be charged yes, on. So I'll, I'll break it down. I'll do two fifty <laughs> today. Do, 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 do two fifty tomorrow. I'll do four hundred today. <laughs> so that I won't be charged. No, but but, but that, that jokes apart. Now yes, I want to say that. Um, do you think that Nigeria is really ripe for it? For this, you know, with all the issues we have with our POS transactions, uh, online transactions, at times you send in, you make a transfer, and your transfer is hanging. You that mm. you are sending, you are not getting the money. The receiver is not getting the money. You go to the bank, the bank tells you wait for 10 days. And, you know, the other day I was at the bank and somebody was saying, my money for the past two months, you know, it's nowhere to be found. And they keep pushing you here and there. Do you think we are really right for this? So to, to, so to take this, the, the in, in fairness, the, the cashless policy is a good one. Um, it's a nice one for, for all the countries to have and for, and for Nigeria to have because it has a lot of benefits. Like I said, it, it inhibits corruption in some way, you know, um, financial inclusion, you know, f faster access and, you know, more uh, information database for, for, the con for the country and in terms of revenue collection for the country. However, you know, cashless policy is an evolution and the countries that have done it, they have evolved over the years and a lot of things need to be in place. You know, at the base of cashless transaction, you know, is to get the identity management right where you know that if you are dealing with someone, you are okay. sure the person who, who he claims to be. And then uh, based on that is also infrastructure, the, the, the internet services. As we speak today, a lot of rural areas still do not have um, internet services internet or access services. to some of these infrastructure. Bank. Yeah, yeah, of course, and a lot, a lot are bank. So, we, I'm not sure we have evolved to that stage. And you know, like I said, it's evolution. Those, the people that, are, the countries that have done it, a, a whole lot of awareness. It's a, it's a gradual transition. It, it seems like you are is moving, you know, maybe faster than it. Okay. it because it, 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 I, I still feel that, that even some of our, you know. Uh, uh, people that we call dignitaries, okay, like 
I want to go to the Twitter now. I want to go to Twitter, rather. You know, uh, I went on to uh, Dr. Joe Abba's um, uh, Twitter page. And Dr. Joe Abba, he sent a tweet. He said, our central bank still thinks we are in the era, in the military era. If, for whatever reason, you are going to introduce charges for deposits, will you just issue a circular? No explanation, no justification, no sensitization. You just issue a circular and call it cashless policy. Now, wow, what's your opinion about this? Yes, um, true to As in, no sensitization, you just, you know, bombing on us one day and you feel that, um, you know, you can just, you know, push it on Nigerians. Yes, but, but, but like, like I said earlier, this is not new. I mean, this... But we are not Nigerians. Uh, the, the, the layman, uh, you know, might not have been aware. Okay. So, uh, after saying that this is not new, you know, I agree entirely that there should have been a lot of sensitization, exactly. especially when this deposit is to be withdraw, uh, introduced. There should have been a lot of sensitization, stakeholders meeting, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, information, awareness, and time you know maybe time you know when they, they for the withdrawal to happen a lot of timelines were given and a lot of yes, notifications were given emphasis. this would make a, and it was also in faces well this is also in faces okay. this is also happening in in lagos at, at the moment is happening in lagos Ogun, abia anambra rivers kano and fct okay and it will take effect on the entire uh, it will take effect nationwide by march uh, march 1st 2020 so this is also in phases but there should have been time for people to actually adjust mm. take those on or take on those alternative means okay. uh, register on those uh, e-payment platforms that, exactly. are, that are many mm. you know you issue a circular a day before and then you say it should take effect the following yeah. day I, I agree it's not entirely it may not be the best uh, way to handle that there should have been you know and also without consultation I, i'm not aware there were consultations with with with, with stakeholders so this should have been done so I on this deposit part you know. on the deposit part okay. the, the withdrawal part has been in case and it okay. continues because you know as a layman i just feel that I, i'm giving you my money to to use for business you are charging me again for it you know it's you just feel that it's it's not logical yes. of course yeah. i understand that they what they are trying to do the cashless um, policy and all that but now okay let's go back to the house of reps since uh, the house of reps has come out to tell say to the cbn that uh, this should be stalled do you think that they are going to adhere to it um, because the cbn is like it, this is you know in line with the policy so uh, in 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 certain clients and countries with uh, standard way of doing things, the national assembly should not just interfere with the CBN. You know. Oh, I, ideally, you know, CBN should have some sort of you know, in terms of policy making, okay. they should so, know, sort of uh, autonomy. Yes, in terms of policy making, they should be able to CBN should be able to give direction oh. uh, onto where the economy should go. But however, based on the uh, current economic situation as cited by the by the uh, the house of member uh, house of assembly member that moved the benjamin Kalu, the the chairman of media so i mean based on that he he, he behaves that nigeria a lot of things are wrong in nigeria right now people are in hardship and mm -hmm. and you're clamoring for financial inclusion and they, they you know in nigeria there is high illiteracy uh, there is low uh, the awareness rate is low the the the, um, the number of people that are banked is low a lot of people are unbanked and a, and a lot of charges already exist in the banking system so it may not be a time to actually to actually introduce this because uh because of the effect on, on it will have on nigeria um so it's is more like uh, i would say legal area and i'm not sure the direction this would go just like what we had when we had the case of the cjn yeah, and yes. you know trying to you know look uh, weigh the rule of law and the the interest of the nation in the interest of the nation so so we know that the cbn uh the nas they have oversight on everything so i i think they would work with cbn and and come to a common ground but on on uh, one note that i think even if that charges may apply maybe it may not be up to that high. but i also need to mention something that the 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 percentage of people we are talking about is very low a cbn analysis showed that uh less than 10 percent of transactions are above 10 150 000. 
And this 500,000 we are talking about, less than 2% of transactions actually happen. Um, so, I mean, that also needs to be put to perspective okay. because <laughs> the way the the way the noise is going about, you think it's all Nigerians that are affected. Two yeah. percent of the entire but, but, transaction. But, but we want to we want to encourage you know the unbanked to be banked, and we have in some markets people mm -hmm. make that much. Yeah. But, yes. but if you want to encourage them to come to the bank, and then you are still imposing charges. Exactly. There are some traders that yes, they have that much. Yeah, in a day, there's yes. some traders, you know. Okay, you go to Balogu Market, you go see, market, you see the women that sell textiles, you know, in bulk and all exactly. that. They do ca a lot of cash, you know, transactions. Then, then and cash. in so a day, they could want to go to, to the bank with about 800,000 and all that. And you now tell them you're going to chat them, they'll just rather lock it up somewhere inside their shop. <laughs> 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 so what? I agree because because we've, we've spoken about the high illiteracy rates and mm -hmm. uh, you know lack of financial inclusion, that you know that is is uh, is almost bound to happen. People may now want to, especially the not uh, the 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 cadre of people with lack of formal education, mm. they tend to keep the the, the money to in uh, somewhere else. And you know there are a lot of risks, uh, robbery, and a whole lot of things. But we also need to say that you know. Maintaining cash is expensive from, from, from the mm -hmm. CBN and banks. Mm -hmm. It's not maintaining cash yeah. is not cheap. Yeah. There's yeah. cash in transit, mm -hmm. insurance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. even maintaining the cash in states that's mm -hmm. to be so we also need to state that. But I quickly need to add that, you know, for enlightenment of Nigerians, as it stands now, mm. there are a, there are a lot of ways to escape these charges. One of them is using alternative channels. But if you don't want to do alternative channels, alternative channels like the POS, and I know that a lot of my friends that are in businesses and you making use of POS, they are complaining. They complain about yes. the charges. They complain about the, the the issues of error in transactions. The money is neither here or there. The argument between the the, 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 the seller and the buyer. You know, so many things, and you know. The, the inefficiency of the POS. I think CBN, don't you think that CBN should do something about this before implementing this? Yeah, I, I agree. A lot needs to be done. But I, I need to say that our banking sector is actually evolving and compared to the rest of the world, I'm not, I don't think we are behind. In, it's, it's, in, a, in okay. a lot of areas, we are actually, we are actually ahead or we compare to the West. If, if, our, if our economy is like our banking sector, we compare to the rest of the world. Are you, not, are, are you sure we are not a one-eyed man in the land of the blind? Uh, <laughs> no, no. Our banking sector is comparat comparatively in terms of technology. Mm, we are really okay. trying. I we are moving. Yes. Yeah, okay. for, for those yeah. that are banked. Okay, okay you have to read some messages because we got to go. Our time is... Sis or two year term, and she says, we'll What happens it's to the point. illiterate okay. businessmen and women out there who do not know how to read, write, mm. let, let alone operating POS? Don't you think it will give room for people to steal their money? Okay, that, that will, we'll talk about that. Yeah, when it's okay, you wanted to say something before I cut you there. Okay, so. I just need to say that there are ways, I just need to mention there are two ways right now where people can avoid it, that's good as a bank. Okay. Right now, the, the policy is not linked to BVN. So you can't in a bank have multiple accounts. You can have three, four accounts. <laughs> so if you have 200, 000, uh, 2 million, you can deposit 500,000 in each of these accounts. Now there are over 20 commercial banks in Nigeria and maybe over a hundred money deposit banks, including microfinance bank. You can have as much accounts and you know, instead of incurring charges, if you do mm -hmm. not want to, okay. you can actually. Okay, that's so if you have way. 20 that's million, that's a way of escape. Okay, <laughs> okay. opening account is but... not opening account is not exactly um, difficult mm. if you have your not if anymore. you have your documents. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. Within a day. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to one of the ways to escape. Okay, we, 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 this is coming on the heels of um, recent increase in VAT, some, some from five percent to seven point five. Isn't it? You know, appearing like too much hardship on the common man. What's your What's your take on that, especially come up from the VAT angle? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, like I said, so, ex so this, uh, in honesty, is uh, is like uh, too much for Nigerians to bear at this time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the uh, House of Assembly is coming in, in in that regard. You know, VAT is proposed to be increased to seven point two from five percent. It has been approved by the Federal Executive Council. There's also something uh, in the pipeline called police, um, police, uh, police fund, you know, mm -hmm. that will be taken from profit of companies, you know, uh, 0.05 of <laughs> percent to, you know, if we have education task company contacts okay. and NIDA already. And then there's a, so it, this is coming too much. And, you know, the import on the, on the Nigerians, on the main man on the street is that 
For now, the VAT is 5%. For every 100 Naira worth of goods you buy, the, the seller charges a, point, a 5 Naira. He builds in a 5% into it. So if it, is, it costs 100 Naira, it, it will have a 5 Naira to it. Now, that 5 Naira is going to increase to 7 Naira to Cobo. So that's the implication. So if something costs 105,000 before, because uh, 100,000 and VAT being 5%, it's going to cost you 100,000 807,200 naira now and you know we are saying the Nigeria is thinking that i mean this may not be at the moment yes some developed countries of the world have quickly wrap rate. up in 10 seconds because we have to leave they have higher vat rate but i mean uh, you can't compare the development so this at uh, this time may not be the best thing to to be to be to wow yes. i so much wish i so much wish we can go on and on and on but you know time is never a friend of us you know in but i i want to believe that our, our viewers they've been educated yes, yes. this morning because i as a person have also been educated before we leave the studio i just want to give you one of our tweets this morning and this tweet is from dr Deepo Deepo award i have to read this tweet because i was also a victim yesterday lagos accounts for over 50 percent of nigerians industrial and commercial establishments yet plagued with traffic congestion aka akorive writing for cbn africa noted that employees in lagos are stressed burnt out and exhausted simply because of early traffic i tell you that traffic i spent over 10 hours yesterday from oshogbo to lagos i didn't know i would be able to make it to the studio this morning i think something should be done something on the be long done. bridge alone to Bega, we spent i think we spent over six hours there so i think <laughs> so that people will not just start having cardiac arrest like we do mm. well this has been perspective this has been beautiful on the show this morning thank you so much mr akin he is a financial expert and he's been able to you know stress you know buttress you know the issue of the 2.2 percent and the three percent charge of the cbn he's been able to uh, educate us this morning thank you very much we appreciate your thank being you. here this morning thank, thank you, you so me. much thank yes abi babdo we've got to go yeah we gotta go and we'll <laughs> come back again <laughs> yes <laughs> by his grace the show is in perspectives you know you can also always be there join us to get on our social media platform on Twitter at C Perspectives and on Facebook and Instagram at Watch Perspectives. You can follow me at, on Facebook at Sinka Kenny World, on Instagram and Twitter at Sinka Kenny World. Till we come your way, same time, same station next week. I am Yinka Kenny. Thank you.